all right i think this might be my first video of the new year um well welcome to the channel anyone who hasn't seen this yet who haven't hasn't been watching any of my videos sometimes when i'm unconfident in myself i stammer and i i stutter and that's exactly what's happening right now but i'm going to regain my stride so essentially what these videos are it's it's like uh like kind of it's supposed to be like a daily recording like a diary kind of thing journal of like my progress and i do a voiceover sharing my thoughts this is meant to be an introspective kind of experience for anyone listening. You're going to hear me express some of my thoughts. I'm going to say things maybe in a way you haven't heard of before. I'm kind of good at finding ways to do that. So anyways, this is a... Uh, I don't know what day this was. This is more than a week ago. But I made the goal uh, at New Year's. I was like, I think I want to make the goal to make a, a YouTube video every single day of the year this year. To be as productive as possible. My goal in starting this YouTube channel a year ago from now was to improve my speaking abilities to learn how to communicate and to express my deeper thoughts so anyways uh it's been a long journey and a process but i it has accomplished exactly what i thought it would and i'm i'm becoming very adept at sharing my thoughts the thing i'm still finding difficult is that when you're talking by yourself when it's like monologue it's hard to rope in your thoughts and to, to keep it concise and to make it so that everyone can understand. It's easier when you're talking to someone because they can interrupt your, your train of thought. They can redirect you back to a, a, a specific point. It's a lot easier. But the theme of this video is fat to fit. Um, it's kind of a joking way of, of saying that, like, uh, that I've bulked up and now it's time to, to slim down a bit. Um, if, you, if you can tell, I mean, this is me, my opinion maybe i'm biased because it's myself but i don't look too fat like i just think i'm just i'm heavy and i have a little bit of excess body fat um what i'm trying to do here is improve my coordination improve my uh athletic abilities slightly because what i've been doing for the past year has been powerlifting, especially focused on squatting in the last three or four months of the year i transitioned to working on my upper body as well as squatting still and overall like i gained uh 15 pounds ish maybe 20 pounds and not all of it is muscle obviously um my goal was first to get strong and then to become athletic and then become powerful and explosive that's my goal and it's a, a years long process that it's gonna take to culminate and to show the results i want but i'm patient enough because i understand i've lived more than half of my life being overweight being fat and so what's one or two years more what's what's three to five years more after having waited so long so anyways um yep this is me at 305 pounds probably this is like the heaviest i've ever been but it's also the strongest i've ever been and i actually feel relatively healthy um this is me over break so right now i live in utah right now going to school actually not in classes right now but i am enrolled in school this was me over the christmas break and so I went out there, I gained like five or six pounds just over the break itself from being able to eat well and, and exercising consistently. While I was in school, I like lacked motivation. Also time and energy was, was always a, a precarious situation. Like I would go to school, go to work, come back and just be super tired. I did work out, let's say like I worked, I worked out 60% of, of the week, like 60% uh, of the days of the year I was working out, but there was always days in between where I didn't. And so that kind of inconsistency, it produced minor results, but didn't produce anything substantial. Uh, during the summer was probably my, my peak. And then during school, I slowly declined. And then over the over the break, in a three-week span, I was able to turn it around. Anyway, so I'm at 305 right now. Uh, heaviest I've been, strongest I've been. And just to test myself, I went on, like, uh, on two half-mile runs, which I didn't really run much during the, the powerlifting period and so it was it was good for me to see that i was i still have some mobility um although it's definitely uh declined i'm not as flexible as i used to be um but this is all kind of it's like i'm like primed i'm in a perfect position because all this fat on my body all the the extra mass uh is basically potential energy once i release that like once i shed the fat then my body will just be free to to move and to basically it's like self-expression like to do anything i want to do like my goal is to eventually be able to dunk on that basketball hoop my goal is to run super fast to jump high to do backflips i want to do everything and essentially what i've done is i've deconstructed the in my mind i've deconstructed the whole process broken it up bit by bit 
and I decided like what's what's the most realistic thing I can accomplish right now and I was like okay I need to get strong because in the past I, ha I haven't I have a strong and actually I'm a big guy I have strength but relative to my frame I was kind of weak so I decided to work on that um one thing this is a tangent but one thing i've decided to work on a lot is my relationship with god in the past couple of years and so right now what's most important to me is including god in everything i understand that god is all knowledgeable all powerful and he can do anything he can perform any work or any miracle he wants to and so i decided like why not consult god about fitness and allow him to inspire me in my in my decision making process so my whole plan is based on that principle that I first I just asked God what he thought I should do and then I just adopted that and I was like okay it'll work because God is the one who gave it to me so I, I, I communicated to him through the spirit through prayer and the answers I received are what I used to to construct my workout plan which I, I never schedule workouts I never program them it's mostly like you intuitively know what your body needs that day and you work on it and if you don't intuitively know you use your brain to think what have I done in the past couple days and what can I do now to build on that? Um, sorry, I'm a little bit congested, so I'm sniffling. But yeah, this is a super frustrating thing for me, this jump rope uh, this jump rope workout, because uh, I haven't jump roped in a, well over a year. And I, I can obviously, I, I had the timing down to do a two foot jump, but I really wanted to time it well and to do a, a one foot at a time. Because I feel like that's the best way for me to to gain more explosive power is to train my legs unilaterally with as much weight as possible so like putting all my body weight on one foot at a time and so it was super hard for me to time it up and to coordinate it but by the end of the video i did get it and i'm sorry for anyone who's watching who might be bored with the visual like this is just it this is all i did for my workout just some bench press and then some jump rope um i keep it simple um another principle for anyone who might need this is that I've learned throughout the, my workout experience in the last couple of years is that your exercise needs to be directly proportional to the amount of food you eat, especially to the amount of protein and the amount of animal products. Because the animal products, they have the most amount of protein, the most amount of micronutrients out of any food you can eat. And so that's what you should focus on. And if you can't eat enough food to sustain your workout, then your, your, your working out has to, has to decrease, has to suffer a little bit, has to be impacted and vice versa if you're like if you're working out um if you're working out a certain amount but then you eat more than what you're doing in your workouts then you need to work out a little bit harder and go a little bit uh do a little bit more and it'll be compensated by the fact that you're eating a lot so you got to find that balance for me it's been hard to find enough time and motivation to eat as much as i need to the working out part is not tough it's like i know the movements i know the routine and I enjoy the process. The thing is that when I work out a few days in a row without eating well consistently, and then all of a sudden I start to feel weak and I feel like my body just doesn't want it, isn't in it anymore, which is exactly what your body is supposed to do, is to protect its health. Um, so yeah, that's all I have to say about that topic. And now I want to switch into something I learned recently uh, while attending the temple. So I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And in the temple, we do, uh, we have these like ceremonies, these ritual practices that we call ordinances. And so during the ordinance, they teach you a lot about Adam and Eve, about the fall, about our plan, uh, God's plan for us here on earth and returning to heaven. So if you if you read Genesis and you read chapter three, the devil is uh, Lucifer is rebelling against God. And then uh, God basically threatens or not, not threatens. He says, I will place uh, enmity between you and the seed of the woman. So basically saying that I will protect the woman and the way I will do it is with enmity. And then if you look up enmity, the definition is actually hatred. And so this was something I had to learn. I was like wondering why would that be the, the separation, the protection between us and the devil. And what I came to realize is that in other parts of the Bible, Jesus taught that um, you have to you have to love one and, 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 lo and love one, hate the other because you cannot serve two masters. And so in this life, there are two spirits at least two but one is the spirit of god the other one is the spirit of the devil and within those two categories there's lots of like like let's say ministering angels other people that are god's children on this earth they can all be included in the spirit of god as being good and then everything evil is what comes from the devil um the one that you love the most is the one that will abide with you so it's really important that you understand there is a practical purpose behind loving god is that it will protect you because what we learn in the temple and what we see in the bible is that um, Lucifer and his servants, his his demons, that they're really intent on uh, 
Here's where I started figuring out the timing of the jump rope, by the way. I figured out this little, like, do, like, a hop step. Like, one uh, on one foot, and then two, and then one. It really helped me get down the timing. Anyways, but Lucifer and his demons, they're really intent on possessing the bodies that God created for us. And they've been trying to do this since the beginning. And so, what God gave us as a defense, as a protection, is enmity. Meaning that if you hate the devil and love God then you'll be you'll be protected but if you hate god and love the devil then you will have no protection um, because god is respecting of your choice and he allows you to choose so that way you can see for yourself what um result your choices bring so that's something that's super interesting i learned and i really love that concept of like there being a practical reason to love god and i think everyone who anyone listening anyone who will hear this message you got to find out ways to love god more so you can protect yourself and your family uh i honestly think that that's the most important thing is loving God above everything, which is why naturally why God commanded it as being the greatest commandment. Um, I can't believe I clutched it up. I timed that video perfectly and I'm out of things to say. So I hope you guys have a great day and hopefully I'll upload more often.